Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Webster Sigauge. I'm a Chartered Accountant by profession, and I'm the Deputy Managing Director for Chartered Accountants Academy. I'm also the Head of Department for the Financial Reporting course. I would like to welcome you to the Zimbabwe Certificate of Theory in Accounting, the 2019 class. I hope you're going to enjoy your studies. I'd like to start by introducing my team, which is going to assist me in the financial reporting course. So, as I have mentioned before, I'm the head of department, but supporting me directly is Ms. Bob Mindu. She is a competent accountant who has passed her CTA, she's also passed her ITC, and she's sitting for her qualification exam, which is the APC uh, this year in 2019. Also, I've got Denzel who's going to be assisting. He's passed his CTA. At the time of recording this video, he was preparing for sitting of his ITC. I also have got three assistants who are not directly resident at the academy, but who work at our head office, which is Mr. Anis Sudaka. He's going to be coming um, here and there to assist as well. He's going to conduct some other classes. Uh, Mr. Anis Sudaka is the CEO of the CAA group. He's a qualified chartered accountant and has got membership with both SICAM and with ICAS right here in Zimbabwe. We also have Ms. Cleopatra Wodenikam. She's also a qualified chartered accountant. And also Mr. Axel Mapundematra, who has passed his ITC, CTA, as well as his APC. He's uh, just waiting to finish his article so that he can get his membership. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the team which is going to be supporting you in the financial reporting course. They're here for you, work with them so that you pass your studies. Let's talk about the learning material that you need. So to support your studies, we have designed the course so that it, there is um, lectures as well as other material that you can use besides lectures. So the first thing is we've got modules that we're going to give you. These modules, there is a content module which has got content uh, material to read as well as question banks which will be supporting for your practice. There are modules which are going to be given in first semester and other modules which will be given in the second semester. The modules that we distribute are going to be in soft copy, but if you do need a hard copy, please feel free to come through. I'm sure there's an arrangement which can be made so that you actually get a hard copy. I uh, just said a bit of some cost to cover the printing costs. Okay. I'm sure this was mentioned as well during your orientation. Um, then I've already spoken about the question banks which will be there to support the, the content module. These modules will be uploaded on my CAA, which is our learning platform which we use to communicate with the students. So my CA includes a chat room where you can raise some queries, where you can discuss, where you can even consult with our resident lecturers. Then to support you, we also have pre-recorded video lectures, just like the one that you're watching right now. So almost every topic that we're going to have is going to have a video lecture. We expect you to have watched the video lecture in advance of the class because during class, we will not get too much in detail of the content, especially for financial reporting. It has got a lot of content, so we don't have enough contact time to actually cover all of that content. So we expect you to actually watch the videos um, during uh, other times, not the contact time. And when you come to class, you are prepared for the class. You've got questions that you already have. You've attempted the, the questions, the homework questions that would have given you. So work with the weekly, pl weekly plans which we're going to give you, which um, detail what you're supposed to do each week. Okay. Then you also need a financial calculator. The course requires you to actually have a financial calculator. There are going to be some complex questions uh, calculations which you need calculators for. Now, for this calculator, please do not buy a scientific calculator. Let me re-emphasize that the calculator which is required here is a financial calculator, not any other calculator. Okay. Then, we also expect you to have Saika handbooks. So, Saika handbooks are uh, it, the, the course that, you, you, that you're doing, it's an open book, um, open book uh, examination. So you are allowed actually to, um, you are allowed to, 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 to go into the exam with some books that you can use. But these are only psycho handbooks which are allowed for you to get into the examination with. Yeah. So your psycho handbooks for, for 2019 for financial reporting course are going to look like this. 
we are now going to be using the red handbook. Um, if you have seen other people who have attempted CTA before, they used to use the green handbook. There's been some changes which are there. So make sure that you buy the appropriate handbook. Do not buy a second hand because a second hand will not be allowed into the examination room. Then we have uploaded the lecture program for the full year 2019 on my CAA as well. So you can actually see which lectures are we doing on which particular week. It's important for you to know that. Um, it's, it's important for you as well. Let me reemphasize that you need to attend, you need to attend all classes. If you are le if, if you are left behind, it becomes very difficult, especially for this course, for you to uh, be up to date due to the content which we have. Now, that's, that was just the housekeeping part about um, the financial reporting course. Now, let's talk about what is expected, ladies and gentlemen, at CTA. So this course is a bit different from all other courses that you might have done before. It's different from your undergrad. This course demands a lot. So you we are going to be covering almost all the accounting standards which are in the, in the, in the handbook. Most of them we're going to cover. We will give you scope in terms of the uh, the standards which we don't cover, which are not within the scope of the syllabi. So we'll give you that. We expect you to master the basics for for the course. So for each particular standard, the basic core principles, which are the founding principles in accounting for that particular standard, we expect you to have that basics because those basics are the foundation of understanding the accounting treatment. So please make sure that before you go and look at the complex areas, understand the reason why that standard is there, the reason why the accounting treatment is like that, that allows you to be able to think outside the box, to think critically. Then after you've mastered the basics, that's when you expect you now to look at the complex stuff, the high level stuff. So now how do we expect you to differentiate yourself between a third year student and a CTA student. Now there's that extra that you need to know. So the basics or the foundation is not enough. It's what we expect you to have received from your undergrad. It's important for you to study smart. I've mentioned before that do not fall behind because if you fall behind, it becomes quite easy for you to fail this course. So always make sure that you're working, ladies and gentlemen, your social life is going to change. You need to be dedicated to this course for you to to, to pass it. Now, let me, I've talked about the accounting treatment. I want to emphasize this before we get into the other standards because I have realized over the years that some um, students from other investors where they come from, they may not have covered the accounting treatment, so they do not know the expectation of the accounting treatment. What is the accounting treatment? So basically, when we talk about the accounting treatment, we're talking about the accounting cycle. When you've got a transaction, what is involved in terms of financial reporting for that particular transaction? Where do you start until where we say, where do you end? So account treatment basically starts with classification of a transaction. When you talk about classification, we're saying which class is it? When you look at the conceptual framework, when we, which we'll look at lecture one, it will give you five elements. So every transaction, all the transactions either fit into it's either it's an asset, it's a liability, it's an expense, it's income, or it's equity. So the first thing is to classify and understand which of the element is it. Then from there, once we understand the classification, we, don't, we then go into, should we be recognizing this? Should we be putting this transaction into our financial records? Does it make sense for us to be recording this? We assess the benefit versus the cost of recording it. Yeah. So that's the second stage to make that decision to put it into our financial records. Once we agree that we need to put it into our financial records, then the next question is at what value, at what amount are we supposed to be putting it at? So measurement is the one which comes next. After we've determined the measurement, we've put a figure which is accompanied with the transaction, so we put it into the books. The next thing is the figures alone are not enough for a user to actually interpret and make a decision. So we need to give supporting explanations, which are disclosure notes. So the disclosure notes are coming to supplement more information to the figure that you have presented and saying, for a user to understand better, 
What do I need to explain? What is the science behind that figure? Then, um, lastly, we've got presenting it. In which statement are we going to present it so that it, uh, it's in it's in order? It's easier for someone to actually understand it. So we then group and say so we present, for example, figures which are related to the financial performance of the business in one statement, which is the statement of profit, uh, profit and loss, uh, and other comprehensive income. Or we we take um, figures which are related to the financial position of an entity and we put it in one statement. When you want to look at figures which reflect the cash movement of the business, we put them into another statement which is called the statement of cash flow. So the presentation is now bringing in to say, let's take transactions of the common class and put it into one statement so that a, a user can easily make a decision out of that. So this is the accounting treatment, ladies and gentlemen. You are expected to understand this whole cycle for any particular transaction which will be given. Now, in your previous studies, the main emphasis which was there was for you to have an understanding of how do you account for something. But when you get to CTA, let me also emphasize that we are not expecting just for you to know the accounting treatment, but now this is applied accounting. Now, applied accounting means we expect you to take a situation which is within the industry, take your knowledge that you've gathered in your undergrad and apply it to that situation and derive a meaning out of that particular situation. That's applied accounting, which means if you give me a definition of a something at CTA level, you do not get any marks. Because you're simply giving a definition that's straight from the standard. We allow you to go into the exam with the standards. So you've not applied yourself. Telling me the situation which is on the ground is not, so, or not applying yourself. But if you take a situation and you take a knowledge and you interpret that situation using the knowledge that you have, then we say now you are applying. So you're taking your knowledge and applying it to a situation. Let me use an example, ladies and gentlemen, to illustrate what I'm trying to say. So I've got example number one here, which is Z Gold Limited is a sole supplier of cooking oil in Zimbabwe. This is the only supplier of cooking oil. The entity has one plant that is a capacity of 10,000 units per day, and these are sold in full daily, which means they are reaching capacity and they're selling all of their products, which they would have uh, manufactured. In November 2018, the government lifted a statutory instrument 64 that protected oil industry from cheap imports. So at some point in November last year, the government made a decision to lift the protection which they had given to the industry and they opened up the borders for cheap imports from other foreign countries to flock into the country or to flock into the country. Now, the first thing is understand the situation, understand the scenario, what are they telling you about? So now you've understood the scenario. The next thing is, look at the required, what does the examiner expect from me? And here they say, discuss the accounting implications of the decision made by the government to revoke SI-64. Now think about this situation for um, a moment. Think about what does it mean? What accounting implications does lifting of SI-64 have? Now remember, your accounting treatment has got classification, recognition, measurement, presentation, and disclosure. Which one do you think of these five is the one which is most affected by lifting of the statutory instrument? Okay. So I want you to think about it um, for some time and tell me what, um, what, what you think. So how do you approach um, questions? Okay. So we've talked about you need to read and understand the scenario. Once you read and understand the scenario, it will give you the substance of the transaction, what is happening underneath. So in, in that one, we now know that the company is going to be facing a lot of competition due to the lifting of the SI-64. Then take note of items that you deem to be critical. In this case, what we deem to be critical is the lifting of the SI-64, which has got implications on the demand of the product. Then read and understand the required. So what does the examiner want from you? 
the examiner wants you to explain the impact to reporting of the lifting of that. So in other words, if demand for a product falls, what does it mean to our accounting? What does it mean for the business monetary terms? Then plan your solution. So what am I going to write back? What am I going to give? Then write your response. Okay. So if it's a theory question, always follow that, that process. But remember, we say this is an applied course. So what we expect you now to do is, we expect you to state the guiding principle. Basically, what concept are you taking, which is guiding you to apply to the situation? So for every situation that will be given, there will be a concept which will be coming from the standard which we expect you to apply. So take that concept, apply it to your situation, and then conclude on what you think. So let's get back to that example that I've given you earlier on. Now, when you look at the accounting implication of this, I'm looking, for example, I think the main issue which particularly might be there is the entity is losing value because the entity is going to be facing a lot of competition. If it's facing a lot of competition, that means we are producing 10,000 at the moment. We may not be able to sell 10,000 units as usual once the borders have been opened for cheap imports, which means the customers may be favoring, favoring the imports rather than our product. The moment that happens, what happens is we're not going to be able to produce at full capacity anymore, which means our daily production may not be 10,000 anymore. It has to reduce to maybe 7,000 or 6,000, depending on who's still buying our product. Now, if capacity, if we start operating below capacity, what does it mean? It means that we are not exhausting the full value of our assets because our assets are supposed to be producing 10,000 per day. So our plant for manufacturing is going to be utilized at under capacity. If we're utilizing it under capacity, what does it mean? It means our asset is now overvalued because when we valued our asset, it was with an expectation that that asset is going to give us an economic benefit in future, which is equivalent to about 10,000 units. But now that's not what we're going to be getting anymore. So that means potentially our asset is going to be impaired. So the accounting implication, the main, the main one, the, the one which is affected most is valuation of our assets for the entity. So that means we need to test for impairment for this particular, um, for our particular assets. So when you look at what we've done here is we've looked at a situation, we've looked at the accounting commitment, then we've taken our knowledge. Our knowledge is we know that there are indicators of impairment, and this is one of the indicators of impairment from IS36. We've applied it to the situation, and we've reached, we've reached a conclusion. Okay, so that is kind of what we're expecting from you within the program. Okay, now what type of requirements do you expect? So you're going to be uh, given requirements which include discussion, let me emphasize this one. Discussions are going to be a lot. ITC, which is the examination you're preparing for um, at uh, board level, is going to focus a lot on discussion question. So we're going to be bringing a lot of discussion question. And for your discussion question, we expect you to be applying yourself. Then preparation of journal entries. Journal entries are always key because journal entries are the ones that we use to make a determination of whether you know. So we're going to ask you a lot of journal entries within the course. Then preparation of um, a set of financial statements. You are expect you are now an accountant, uh, so we expect you that when we release you and say you got CTA, you will be competent enough to prepare a set of financial statements, as well as to do the disclosures, which are the accompanying notes to explain the figures. Then we also expect you to do a lot of calculations uh, to calculate certain figures, certain balances. And also expect you at this point to be able to review because this is now high level. We're training you not to be a bookkeeper, not to be a clerk. We're training you to be a finance manager. We're training you to be a finance director. We're training you to be a CEO. So expect you to be able to review and comment on certain things, uh, certain documents, because that is basically what we expect you to be doing within the industry. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, that was just the introduction to the course.